This video will explain the paper, VidLand KD, Improving Language Understanding via Video Distilled Knowledge Transfer. Here's a quick overview of the presentation of this paper. We'll start off with some general improvements in video modeling, different architectures like the Time S former model, uh, different self-supervised learning strategies like the VimPack strategy of using the vector quantized variational autoencoder and the contrast of learning mass language modeling objectives, and then other ideas around multimodal vision language, or even uh, say audio visual learning in this general uh, field of video modeling. Then we'll look at this uh, general theme of visual grounding, uh, papers like Experience Grounds Language, and climbing towards NLU on the difference between meaning and form. These ideas of how uh, we can really base these language representations in some kind of uh, other kind of grounding like vision in this case. And then we'll take a recap of the vulcanization paper. Vulcanization is a paper that this VidLane uh, KD algorithm builds on. Vulcanization uses an image text retrieval model to use the image uh, tokens as classification labels and have the supervision that we'll look at later in the video. And then we'll look at the data set. They're using this how to 100 million data set. Uh, we'll go over some quick statistics of the data set and then look at the data set page. A really interesting data set for uh, doing video modeling that is facilitating these advancements in uh, video modeling, having a massive data set like this uh, that I think is taken from YouTube. Uh, then we'll look at the architecture design of training the teacher model, uh, exactly how they're going to be encoding the video representation in this, uh, in this paper using a two-dimensional pre-trained image encoder and then combining that with some kind of uh, three-dimensional video feature extractor and then fusing these features together to overall represent the video data and then have this multimodal combination with the text representation as well, which is something we'll get into later in the video. And then, so this will make up the teacher learning objective, particularly looking at this, uh, explaining what the hinge loss is and how hinge loss is used to train this uh, how to do self-supervised learning with this how to 100 million data set then we'll look at these really interesting knowledge distillation objectives aside from this standard uh, soft labeling l2 regression on hidden states they also use this technique called neuron selectivity transfer and they also use a contrastive uh, representation distillation interesting ideas for building on knowledge distillation so then we'll look at the results ablations of different uh, ideas in the paper and then diagnostic test sets particularly showing how this kind of uh, visual grounding improves language task performance. Here are some recent improvements in video modeling. Video data is generally hard to work with because it's really high dimensional. You usually have 30 frames per second and each frame is an image. So say you have moderately high resolution images of 224 by 224 by RGB images and then you have 30 of those frames for every second of video. And then you have these longer videos like YouTube videos or these action classification data sets. They're really large data sets so it's really hard to process them with uh, deep learning and do this kind of gradient descent through such a high dimensional data structure. So we have some uh, architectural advancements that have been helping with this. One of the earliest ideas was this idea of late fusion with convolutional networks where say you have uh, these grouped clusters where you process say the first three frames and the next three frames and then you fuse together these features after say eight layers of convolutional processing and this kind of idea and now we have the time s former where you have this attention where it alternates between attention across the time axis and then attention within the spatial window uh, going through the feature map and now we have these uh, new advances in self-supervised learning this vimpack strategy is really interesting this is where you use the vector quantized variational autoencoder to compress the image frames into this discrete codebook space that's you know regularized with this prior knowledge and the bayesian variational autoencoder all these kinds of ideas and then you use that to uh, do these self-supervised learning objectives like contrastive learning and mass language modeling predicting the masked out discrete tokens from the compressed representation again from the vector quantized variational autoencoder so also in video language modeling, Dolly using this vector quantized variational autoencoder thing is able to generate these uh, images from language descriptions, which is really impressive. And then Clip doing this kind of zero shot transfer of contrastive learning, aligning images with natural language descriptions. And then we have the vulcanization paper uh, building on this VidLang KD research. And we also have an architecture, general purpose vision architecture, maybe not one of the most well-known, but it, this is a pretty interesting architecture, similar to the T5 framework of just showing how you could uh, construct some framework of unifying any possible, say, visual question answering, uh, image captioning, and then also image classification, bounding box detection, and then all the language tasks like the glue benchmark, natural language inference, these kinds of things, unifying them into a single architecture. So overall, a very interesting space of video modeling, multimodal learning, video, language, images, audio, all these kinds of ideas. So the motivation behind this paper is visual grounding for language learning. So the model has seen these videos, so it should improve its understanding of, say, physical phenomena when you ask it questions like uh, what will happen if I drop this ball or what will happen if I uh, hit this object with a hammer <laughs> these kind of ideas of having some kind of physical reasoning ability that could be learned from looking at video data and generally learning about things from uh, the visual world that helps with understanding these 
say analogies that are used in language or these kinds of ideas. So here are a couple of really interesting papers that outline this vision of this research. The first of which experience grounds language, talking about all these different uh, modalities that language should be based in, whether it's uh, social communication, you know, where you use language explicitly for the intent of communicating with other agents, or whether it's this kind of visual audio, some kind of language grounding in some other modality like vision. And then uh, climbing towards NLU on meaning, form, and understanding the age of data uses this interesting analogy of uh, two people are stranded on an island, they communicate uh, through a cable underwater, an octopus is <laughs> under the water intercepting the signal, and the octopus thus learns how to communicate with them, but then when one of the islanders encounters a bear, something out of distribution like that, the octopus has no idea what to say to the other islander because it has no grounding of the representations. It's just mimicking the style from the underwater cable. And then more ideas about just generally this idea of the difference between semantic meaning and language compared to just learning the form and the high level uh, statistics of how you actually use language. So two really interesting papers motivating this problem of trying to ground language learning in some other modality. So predecessor to VidLAN KD is vulcanization. Vulcanization is really exciting because it uses visual supervision to actually improve on the state of the art on the GLUE benchmark. And the GLUE benchmark is this collection of natural language tasks like text classification, natural language inference, Quora duplicate question detection, uh, semantic similarity, these kinds of ideas. So the idea behind vulcanization is you use an image to text retrieval model to fetch vulcans to supervise the language token. So the BERT model is going to be predicting these vulcans. Now, one limitation of the vulcanization technique that they address in this paper, VidLang KD, is that you have a, these vulcans are a classification labels. So you have an output cardinality of 30,000 labels for the images. So you have an image set of 30,000, you're predicting the labels. You're not, say, generating these images or any idea like that. And maybe it's limited in this idea of uh, only predicting 30,000, the finite approximation, as they call it in the paper. But this is the overall scheme of fetching these vulcans, constructing this uh, classification vocabulary, and then using the additional supervision where you pair humans with this image of the humans, languages, and so on to add this additional supervision to the language model. So again, just to reassess this point, avoid the approximation error of using a finite image label vocabulary and the lack of vocabulary diversity of this small image text data set and try to have more visual supervision in this VidLAN KD algorithm building on the idea of vulcanization for visual supervision for language learning. One of the essential details to deep learning experiments are the data sets that are being used. So here's the data set that's being used for pre-training with video data. And this is a really interesting data set. I've seen this more and more recently, this how to 100 million data set. And we'll look at the data set page next, but here are some quick uh, statistics about the data set. About 1.2 million videos, 136 million video clips from these videos, making up 134,000 hours of video, which again, 30 frames per second, so 60 times 60 how many image frames are in this data set is absolutely massive. And then 23,000 different visual tasks are contained in this data set. And then when we look later on, when they do the knowledge distillation transfer that we'll explain, explain later, they're using Wikipedia Wiki 103 for the uh, distillation of the language representations. But this is the video pre-training data, also used in this VimPack algorithm that I highly recommend checking out if you're uh, working in this video representation learning field. And this is the statistics, the high level overview of this data set. So this is the data set page for how to 100 million. You can see these little uh, slices of the data set visualizing, uh, say, cooking videos, how to repair things around the house, uh, knitting, I think, or stitching, something like that, and then measuring things. And this is the idea of how to 100 million. So you have 15 years of video from these 23,000 activities, cooking, handcrafting, uh, garden or fitness. You can uh, search the data set on this uh, interface, you see more details, pets and animals, education and communication, all these different ideas. This is a remarkable data set that's facilitating representation learning for video data, and, and data is a huge part of these advances in deep learning. So a part of what makes the how to 100 million data set so potent for this representation learning is that it's paired with a language description of the video. So it's saying something like, here's how you peel garlic, or some idea like this is the, is the natural language description of the video. Here's how you hammer a nail, here's how you I don't know, these are all the things that we just looked at with the data set page. And you can just search how to 100 million if you want to search through the data set and see the corresponding natural language descriptions. But here's the overview of the representation learning strategy. So we start off with a pre-trained image encoder 
that uh, constructs feature, uh, frame features for each of the individual frames per second. So say you have 30 frames per second, you're going to pass that through, say, a pre-trained ResNet 152 or EfficientNet, one of these kind of uh, models that gives you a compressed vector representation, and those are going to be each of the Vs. So these Vs that come out of the pre-trained image encoder that, again, no gradients will flow. Not again, I didn't say that the first time, but no gradients will flow through this pre-trained image encoder. It's taken off the shelf, and there is no representation learning that goes back through that. It's just pre-trained. So you take those encodings V. These are the vectors that come from the pre-trained ResNet, and now you're passing into the parametric that, that will be learned during this training, the teacher visual encoder. So this is learning how to process this collection of V, frame, uh, v representations that came from the pre-trained image encoder and turn them into a representation of the overall video. So you could do things like have... Uh, three-dimensional convolutional networks or the time s former or combining these different ideas for how exactly you want to structure the architecture of this uh, visual encoder for the the sequence of representations for the video frames but they describe using a combination of two-dimensional and then also the three-dimensional video style models to combine the features for this representation hv hat that comes out of the average pooling of the of the representation so another interesting strategy of using this average pooling to make up the final representation and one of these architectural details so overall a little fuzzy in exact there there's so much uh so many degrees of freedom for how you want to design this and there isn't really one standard approach to uh, modeling video data like there is with say the resnet where you just pass the image frame through the resnet and get the vector it's difficult to figure out how exactly you want to aggregate the features across the time axis and the computational blow up. So what they're doing is they pass it through this teacher visual encoder. It looks like a what they call isomorphic architecture where it has the same sequence length as the input as the output. And then you have the average pooling to form the final representation. So then what they're doing is they have a language modeling uh, objective as well. So it's a multimodal architecture that means, and, and this is a late fusion architecture. So it separately processes the visual video data and then it separately processes the language data. And then it later on, merges these representations at this layer of the loss function. So this later uh, merging is known as late fusion with these multimodal architectures combining vision and language, vision and audio, audio and language, and so on. So the language model, just a standard language model, uh, taking the paired caption with the video and then a random caption used for this triplet margin loss. And next we'll look at this hinge loss, which is how we are stretching this loss function between this pooled video representation, the representation that comes from the paired caption language model, and then a random sampled uh, caption. So here's the idea behind the hinge loss that structures the loss function for combining these representations. So we have this alpha is the margin loss. The margin is the difference between these uh, two representations that forms the max when you do the zero between the uh, distance between just the sum distance between the cosine similarities between the original paired paired uh, caption with the randomly sampled caption x prime and then the original video and then you have another randomly sampled video v prime so you have the uh, margin loss between the paired caption randomly sampled caption and then the video with the paired caption and then the paired caption with a randomly sampled video and this is the hinge loss that's used uh, some of these triplet losses where you don't have to rely on these uh, large batches. So SimClear, MoCo, these kind of strategies use massive batches. So you have a massive negative normalization compared to these kind of triplet loss strategies where you just say have one positive, one negative, and then you use this kind of margin loss to uh, make that work. So now that we have a teacher model and particularly the language modeling part of the teacher model that's been uh, using the visual supervision in this hinge loss, we want to distill these representations to a student language model. So the student model in the distillation objective is only the language modeling part and we're only going to really be using the language modeling part of the teacher network for this distillation. So with the distillation objectives proposed in the papers, we have the usual, this paper, we have the usual recipe of soft labeling where the teacher produces a different uh, label distribution than say one hot encoding for uh, the mass language modeling where there's only one token that's been masked out and one ground truth to predict. And then we also have an L2 regression where you're comparing hidden state vectors in intermediate states of the uh, language models. But what they're also using really interestingly is neuron selectivity transfer and also this contrastive distillation objective. The motivation behind neuron selectivity transfer is we want to transfer these intermediate activation maps. So it's common in distillation to see some kind of matching of intermediate features where we say we want to clone uh, the teacher's layer six with the student's layer four as it say they're 24 and 18 layer models respectively we want to clone these intermediate feature maps and have some kind of way of transferring these intermediate uh, projections from the teacher to the student so they form these kind of attention patterns so shown in uh, images it would have this high activation on this region of the elephant image when it's classifying this as an elephant so how do we actually distill these uh, feature maps 
So they use this algorithm called maximum mean discrepancy, which is a strategy for transferring these probability, for uh, comparing distances between the probability distribution. So we want to compare uh, the distance between this intermediate sequence uh, probability map on the teacher with the student, but we can't just do, uh, say, a distance at each point or uh, we could try maybe like a KL divergence, these kinds of ideas of comparing sequences. And here's another algorithm for doing that, this maximum mean discrepancy with this kernel trick way of, uh, you know, you, you plug in these two activations from the teacher, the student, and then you use kernels like the, these Gaussian kernels. I recommend checking out this paper to learn more about the details behind these kernel functions. The next interesting detail of this is using a contrastive representation distillation objective. So similar to papers like uh, supervised contrastive learning that shows the similarities between cross entropy learning and then this info NCE uh, contrastive learning, you can similarly have this idea of just having uh, on the normal on the top term you have the similarity between the student representation and the teacher representation, and then on the bottom you could have say the student representation with just a bunch of other sampled negatives in the batch and ideas like this. And I think this particular objective with this n over m term, I've I've never seen this before, but I think this is something about uh, structuring it without having to have a large negative batch in ideas like this for the sake of efficiency with uh, you know, computing maybe large batches of this, and I'm not sure exactly why they do this, but usually you'd have, say, a large sample negative set to contrast with the positive distance between the student and the teacher and the student and then a large negative set. So they have these two losses, the uh, log with the HST and then the one minus HST where uh, you have the negative and then the positive sampled from the teacher. So I'm not exactly sure uh, the details of how this is happening, but the high-level overview of contrastive distillation is where instead of just having uh, say a cross entropy probability distribution comparison of the two representations, you have this kind of uh, positive similarity, cosine similarity loss over the negative. So this kind of idea of contrastive losses compared to cross entropy losses are, can be used with any kind of uh, supervised learning. So to put this together, we have one of these multiple loss function ideas for accomplishing this distillation between the teacher language modeling half of the uh, multimodal architecture, where you freeze the parameters and then use it to label this data and label the representation data for uh, the contrastive objective and the neuron selectivity transfer objective to the student language model. So we combine these different loss functions for training the student language model. The authors further describe how the vulcanization technique of using an image to text retrieval model to retrieve the most similar image to the text representation and then use that image class as the classification label for the uh, language modeling supervision is similar to a distillation objective where you're using the image text retrieval model to distill knowledge into the classification labels for a student model. And then later, a later look at the comparison with adding this kind of loss function with the uh, video feature. So you use that pooled uh, V hat representation to retrieve the most similar uh, text uh, video from the how to 100 million data set or however much, many of the cardinality is on the task. I don't know if they use all the 23,000 visual tasks or exactly how the data set is labeled, but using that video as supervision for the language tokens, similar to vulcanization, they'll compare that uh, distillation objective as well in the uh, ablation table. Here are some really exciting results on the potential and already the actualization of this visual grounding. Here are the gains from the BERT model without any visual supervision compared to the vulcanization objective and then up to this neuron selectivity transfer with the uh, contrastive representation di distillation and then uh, some way of using the ResNet and the CLIP algorithms that I'm not exactly sure of. But you see these gains from 89.3 to 94.5 and then overall in the GLUE benchmark, which again, these are language only tasks, 78.6 up to 82.6. This first table is showing the importance of the visual supervision and not just the scale of the how to 100 million data sets. So they use captions extracted from automatic speech recognition of the YouTube videos and then use this as the language modeling data set compared to the Wiki 103 uh, Wikipedia style text data set showing that the Wiki 103 uh, performs better and that the uh, benefits are due to the visual grounding and not just the increased data set size for the uh, visual captions. So then this is showing the ablation of these different uh, distillation objectives really interestingly is this neuron selectivity transfer. And this video didn't really cover it too well, but this idea of this maximum mean discrepancy and this way of comparing, uh, digging further into how you compare uh, probability distances between these spatial activations. So you're, transferring, you're trying to transfer a heat map of activations and you don't just do a KL divergence between the positions on each of the IJ as you go across the spatial map. You have this kernel trick strategy that you know I don't know too much about, but this is seems like one of the cutting edge ideas in distillation, just looking at this table of the gains. Over this is what we usually do, soft labeling, or this you know regression loss between, having a regression loss would be where you compare 
each position of the sequence. So in the heat map idea would be you compare ij of the teacher with ij of the student, slide it over, i plus one, j, that kind of idea with regression loss, the distance and then summing that up with the regression loss compared with this new, newer idea. I don't, I guess it's introduced previously, but it seems like it's emerging in this distillation objective with this paper. And then this contrasted representation distillation, another really interesting strategy for how you want to contrast represent just overall structure this loss function between comparisons of the student and teacher uh, representations, and it seems like a useful strategy for uh, doing that comparison. In addition to reporting the performance on the glue benchmark task, the squad question answering, and the swag multiple choice data sets, they also use these diagnostic sets. And this is one of my favorite trends in deep learning is constructing these special distribution shift, uh, you know, common sense reasoning, these special kind of test sets compared to just uh, like a IID style sampled from the distribution, that kind of I from the same distribution kind of idea of evaluating the performance. So uh, the glue diagnostic set, the, these different ideas of uh, breaking down the different tasks and a natural language inference kind of setup. And then we have this uh, PIQA question answering about physical interactions and common sense reasoning. Interesting improvement from using this uh, visual supervision on these uh, phys physical interaction questions, showing that by v watching these videos, the language representation is better able to capture these physical interactions and pass these kind of uh, input output tests. And then the uh, Tracy data set, temporal reasoning on implicit events, and I haven't looked through these data sets, but another improvement by using the video supervision. Here's another cool visualization from the paper, the visualization of the text to image or text to video retrieval. So uh, we have this query, the expansion of agriculture, commerce, trade, and transportation between civilizations in different regions offered cooks many new ingredients. So this query is embedded into a vector representation from the language model in the paired caption, this X representation, and then it's compared to the distance between these HV hats for each of the videos in the data set, or maybe each of the frames, and you're comparing the HVs, uh, or maybe even the Vs from the video frame feature. But one way of taking this representation and comparing it with either this, one of these, or one of this, I'm not exactly sure whether it's the whole video being returned, which would be the average pool idea, or some kind of individual image frame, which it maybe is what's being shown with these uh, you know, grids. It looks like the top three returned for uh, vi visual frames, or, or that kind of idea. Or maybe it's just the top one most similar vectors within the pool. So maybe this video matches and then these three are the most similar within the pool because it's an average pooling. So it's made up of just averaging out the vector. So it makes sense that they have some kind of rank order like that. But anyways, so here are the outputs from the teacher and the student on the return from this particular query. Thank you so much for watching this quick overview of VidLand KD, improving language understanding via video distilled knowledge transfer. There are a lot of interesting ideas to unpack in this paper and overall this field of multimodal learning, combining videos, the images in them with the audio and videos and then the language descriptions of them, this how to 100 million pre-training data set and all these exciting new strategies for uh, doing different tasks with video data, which is really exciting. So this is a really cool paper and I think it has some really interesting ideas building on knowledge distillation, this neuron selectivity transfer and the contrastive representation distillation and showing how that's improving. And then overall, this, fe this theme of visual grounding and uh, visual supervision for uh, language understanding and glue evaluation, these kinds of ideas. So thanks for watching. Please stay tuned for the rest of the AI Weekly Update series. And please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.